Perfect. So, hello everyone, and welcome to a new um, a, a contract standard protocol meeting. Today we're going to be discussing NEP six to one, which is about. Oh, I lost the title. Give me one second. <laughs> yeah, Vault NEP. So, Edward, I think that you are the one that is uh, uh, the championing this NEP. So, uh, please go ahead, explain us a little bit of what it is. And yeah, the floor is yours. Sounds good. Thanks a lot, Jim. And um, yeah, I'm Edward, basically working on Meteor Wallet. And then my team is also in this meeting, Steve and also Wazer. So yeah, I'm very happy to present about what we've been doing the past couple of months. I'm just gonna share my screen if you don't mind, and then just quickly go through this NEP. If any of you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand and interrupt. Um, then I'm just gonna share my screen right now. So yeah, it is NEP 61, tokenized vote. Basically, we have raised a proposal for a standardized tokenized vote interface on near protocol. And it is basically a near equivalence of ERC 4626. It defines standard vote behaviors and interface. I think for this right now, the main scope is to make sure we have something that's standardized when it comes to accepting deposit, issuing share token, and providing redemptions. So that's the whole scope of, of this NEP. We aren't going to go into very detail of the implementation of the NEP, but we will try to cover as much as possible in this meeting as well. So the use cases of votes is generally cover a few things, but on NEAR right now, I think the major thing is like, for example, liquid staking tokens. We currently have three LST on NEAR, we have R NEAR, we have um, ST NEAR, and also linear. But there's no standardized interface for any of them. Then we've got lending market, like for example, the recent one is Templar. They are sort of like using vote infrastructures as well, but still there's no standard um, interface. And then of course, on-chain capital allocator for new finance, and more market. So I just see like for us, we have an urgent need to standardize all of the interfaces and interactions. Most importantly, to make things more interoperable between different parties. For example, when it comes to DeFi integration, when it comes to wallets, or maybe when it comes to um, just generally com communicating and making sure partners can easily integrate them. I think there's this need or demand to make sure we standardize them. Now let's just quickly go through the NEP. Um, I'm not, like we mentioned earlier, we're not going to go through each of the methods, but as we mentioned just now, there are like a couple of important things that is basically redemption, minting share tokens, and also issuing, sorry, deposits, issuing share tokens, and also redemption. So when we categorize the interfaces, there is asset information, conversion helpers, basically helping, um, users or the developers to convert to shares or from shares to asset amount. Then there's deposit and redemption limits, the max deposit, uh, max min shares. There is also redemption operations, um, which, is, which is redeem, preview redeem, and withdraw, and preview shares deducted from withdraw. Now, I think what's interesting is there's no deposit method here, which is sort of something that we'll go through later on. That is one of the major differences between NEP um, 621 and also ERC 4626. Now, I think if you go through this NEP, you realize there's an example implementation, which is a minimal interfaces. So if anyone's keen to see how a vote can be implemented, you can go through there. There are a few security implications that we've mentioned here as well. There's a few future possibilities for extension as well. So like, for example, one of them is to support the intense token or like the multi-token support, which is one of the main thing on near right now. Then there can be multi-asset vote extensions, basically allowing the vote to accept more than one asset. Right now, this standards only defines one asset. And the last thing is asynchronous vote operations, which is also available on Ethereum. All of these are possible future extensions that we can further look into. Now, coming back to the NDP itself, I think one of the main thing that we have to go through here is the major differences between ERC C4626 and also NEP621. The first thing is deposit and minting, because um, unlike EVM, you know, deposits and mints on near have to go through FD on transfer. So we don't have a mint or like deposit method. Instead, they have to be embedded into a message and then pass into the FT events. 
The second part is the nature of near, which is asynchronous. So when it comes to certain methods like previewing or max methods, we can guarantee to match actual value. And so, you know, certain in certain conditions or like maybe most of the conditions, developers might need to track the total assets internally within the, the contract. And those are the two major differences between us and, and um, ERC4626. And I think that is roughly it. If you have any question, feel free to let me let us know. And then again, if you're keen to go through the NEP, here's a link. I can share the slides later, but it's pretty simple. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I want to double down that. Uh, thank you so much on, 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 on putting the differences between, you know, when one creates an ERC and translates this into an NEP, because it's true that most of the time that is most of the things that we have to deal at, right? Like uh, the fact that you cannot directly translate uh, Ethereum world into near world. There are um, uh, th there are many things to take into consideration, especially how NEP 141 works and uh, the async nature of near. And uh, not only on your presentation, but also on the NEP, this is very well reflected. So th kudos on that and, and, and thank you. Um, now. Iker, I think you were one of the uh, people uh, reviewing the NEP, if I remember correctly. Any thoughts on it? And you know, like, what's your idea on you know your stand on like passing or not passing this NEP? Yeah, um, yeah, thank you. So yes, I was uh, well. Uh, yeah, the first review reviewer of the of the NEP, but uh, also, I mean, um, more like from the uh, representing let's say the infrastructure committee right also pushing this initiative forward as in as edward explained at the beginning right like to have to feel this um primitive this primitive that it was gaining a lot of traction and popularity uh in in DeFi, right this uh token vault um and yeah we saw that okay this is something that is becoming very important uh and used in many projects and and different um components in the ecosystem and it was very important to standardize it and and to have it you know like okay this is how um token balls should work uh, and i think yes um, um as i approved it i think the team uh meteor team did a great job in in this specification um also very important uh, knowing the differences with the, the the ethereum world right because uh from what we asked from the infra committee was like yes let's have an uh, erc i was 46 26 equivalent in in near but this is not as simple as you're just copy pasting uh from from it here right there is a many uh, important differences that you have to take care of uh, and that we didn't think uh, at the beginning and i think the team took took care of that um and that's it right uh, as i said uh, i review it i mainly compare it with the, with ethereum and and how it was working and and the well making sure that the functionality of of the standard for ethereum was uh, taken care of and and also implemented here and i think everything else is well all good um taken care of and and yeah very very happy with the with the work that they put in your team perfect uh, Alexander, you were also part of uh, the team reviewing it, uh, and I also saw that uh, you went very thoroughly through the NEP, even like uh, suggesting some some some, some changes. Uh, so, what do you think about the NEP? Is it now in a in a nice state? And what's your general thought of, of, on it? And you know your vote. Yeah, uh, thank you for the uh, NEP. Basically, I also try to compare to the original um, proposal and um also we have the differences between ethereum and your world of course we have to mention uh, method names of course uh, <laughs> except of the ft on transfer um which changed a few of them like for instance uh, instead of uh um what was that uh instead of preview mint we have preview asset amount required to mint shares method uh, I think uh, from the engineering um, standpoint, usually, you know, uh, uh, it's a big question about <laughs> method names and uh, and so on. I think that 
clarity and uh, you know it is important so th that's why i i feel like we have to go with these new improved longer method names and uh and i think that we don't have to take the original ethereum uh kind of method names for granted so i i believe we have to we have to kind of do our our own way uh but because of the reason and the reason is is confusion around the original uh, terminology and meaning of this standard and i think uh, yeah uh, that was my concern and then we uh, kind of i approve the way we uh kinda, you know we established uh, uh right now um what was else um basically reviewing from the practical engineering perspective um there is some um, terminology kind of asset and assets literally plural name means another uh j just uh term and so like asset is an uh ft address and assets means like an amount of uh tokens you know deposited and so on um i think we improved it um uh, i think also the method documentation is good like uh, it shows differences so between the original ethereum proposal and the new proposal which is cool uh, although it's prone to some you know mistypes and uh, mistakes uh, in just uh, in wording but the uh, api is good okay so that's um that's my review uh, and uh, it's pretty helpful that we actually kind of copy pasted the original proposal because you know uh, you, you know that it already uh, reviewed uh, uh, by the Ethereum team partially, so uh, it's helpful. Okay, that's my perspective. Thanks. Okay, thank you so much. And I do want to to you know state that while we can use ERCs as like. Uh, uh, templates or you know guidance it's true that we don't need to copy them 101 especially because again there are many things in the nature of near that do not do not map 101 to to ethereum and therefore uh indeed like i think that you were referring to the fact that um in in near in order to make a fungible token transfer right like a, 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 and or to attach fungible tokens in a function call we need to use ft transfer call right like we cannot just simply like trans like make a call and attach some functional tokens and because of that uh you needed to change a couple of methods on how uh things are deposited and mint right like instead of deposit and mint you need to act on ft on transfer which is the method that is going to be executed on the vault when they receive a functional token uh, through you know attached to a, to, to a function call so yeah, it's fine that we don't copy, you know, the naming one on one because again, functionality is not gonna be uh, one on one. Okay, perfect. Uh, then I think that for all intended purposes, this NEP is approved, and we do expect to see in the future that if anyone is trying to create a tokenized vault, uh, them to to basically follow this standard. We're gonna make sure also to reflect this in the documentation. Uh, thank you so much for the team working on this, Edward. Thank you so much for Meteor uh, championing this uh, this this NEP and keep making contributions to the ecosystem. And Iker and Alexander, honestly, thank you so much. Without your reviews, we will not have a growing ecosystem. So we truly we 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 truly uh, evaluate. Uh, all of your contributions, both as uh, NEP creators and as NEP reviewers. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Like well, thank with you. That, yeah, with that being said, uh, I think we can conclude this meeting. Have a great rest of your day and see you all around in the air. Thank you, cheers. Have a great day, bye-bye.